Hey, Steven Yanni here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Bernardson Auto Wrecking with Queen Katie of Bernardson, uh, maintaining the notes and making sure that I'm on point. But if you remember the 80s like I do, you probably aren't smiling about the experience because of cars like this. Now, I know these are kind of coming back in vogue as kitsch mobiles, but this is a 1982 Chrysler LeBaron convertible. Now, this is the first year, 1982, for the K car, which was Chrysler's bid at staying alive, staying alive, staying alive. Hey, hey, never mind, we're staying alive. Chrysler did stay alive. They sold the heck out of these things, no thanks to John Travolta. But with that said, the K car was the right car for the time. It was 800 pounds lighter than the 1981 LeBaron, which was riding on the M platform. V8, rear wheel drive. Well, downsized, these things sold like hotcakes. And believe it or not, this thing when new was $13,998. And check this out. That was $4,000 more than the brand new Camaro Z28. No joke. Uh, the third gen Camaro Z28 was $4,000 less than this turd. I mean, this lovely automobile right here. But with that said, it was the car for its time, and these were, you know, kind of popular. There were lots of these built. We'll get to that in a second. Now, the whole thing about the K car was its front wheel drive architecture, and this thing here called the Trans 4, which is a play on Slant 6. You can see it's a transverse mounted four cylinder engine that runs the front wheels through these McPherson struts. And it's a far cry from the original Chrysler uh, convertibles, last one 1970, by the way. So Chrysler did make convertibles from 71 through 81, uh, 10 full years. And so 82, first time right here for a Chrysler convertible. Now, most people remember the Reliant K. This is the 1981 launch. They actually were technically an 82 model year car, or at least uh, the, the, the uh, LeBaron was. But here is the architecture of the all new K car. And we can see that trans four, which means all of the engine is ahead of the firewall. And the rest of the car is devoted to people, which makes it as big as can be, but as small as can be, which was the whole point of the EPA and the horrific uh, cafe, just the bad days of the 1980s, frankly. It was just a dark time to be a car fanatic. But they show here six people theoretically can be inside of that Aries K or whatever that Reliant is right there. That's going to be some pretty cozy folks right there. But again, the fuel economy, they were saying, was 25 miles per gallon on a sedan or 41 on the highway. Imagine that stuff. And that's again at 55 miles per hour because the standard throughout the entire United States was 55. You drove more than that? Well, Sammy Hagar will tell you, you can't drive 55. If you do, uh, you're gonna get like a $200 ticket. It was not inexpensive when you got a ticket. With that said, this one has a Mitsubishi engine. You gotta remember the base engine would have been a 2.2 with 84 horsepower, but for 171 extra dollars, somebody paid for the big block. This is the 92 horsepower 2.6 liter Mitsubishi with 131 foot-pounds of torque and again Mitsubishi right there Chrysler was not making any bones about the fact that they were buying engines from a Japanese car maker which of course Chrysler was in cahoots with going all the way back to the Dodge Colt of 1971 so anyway this is the front wheel drive but the whole thing about this is most K cars were four doors but with that said there were 90,319 LeBarons, two-door and four-door coupes and sedans, but there were a total of 12,825 convertibles like this. Now, here's the thing. Convertibles were not built by Chrysler. They were built by Cars and Concepts of Brighton, Michigan. If you know your Fox Mustang history from 1983 through 1993, every Fox Mustang convertible was sent from Dearborn to Cars and Concepts in Brighton, Michigan to be decapitated, and so too were these. Let's dig in a little bit, open this door, and look at the inside. Now, the crazy thing about these, these were very similar to a regular K car, but with some different changes, of course. The uh, convertible top, the shorter windshield, one and a half inches shorter than a K car hardtop uh, or sedan or wagon. And again, the seats in these were special. The seats had a shorter upright and a shorter headrest to tuck down low below the belt line. So the K cars were different. Under the floor is a big X frame. We can't see it here, but again, to stiffen these things up, Cars and Concepts had to do a lot of fortification. And again, a total of 12,825 people uh, suckered into or took the bait, I mean, made the smart investment in one of these things for 13,998 base dollars. I mean, they could go up from there with uh, options. But again, on this one here, we can see something kind of bizarre. The rear seat on this, if 
can shoot down through here because of the top stack mechanism on each side, a microscopic back seat, goofy little thing right here. Of course, the stereo equipment's built into the speaker or the corners, which is nice, but again, that back seat is pretty damn small. And again, uh, it's basically forcing 10 pounds into a five pound bag. Now here we have Motor Trend magazine right here. This is the, uh, uh, what do we have here? Probably 1982, February of 82. We all know that Motor Trend never makes any mistakes with maybe the exception of canceling Roadkill's Junkyard Gold. Just saying. Canceled? What do you mean we're canceled? But inside this, we have a roundup of Chrysler's first family of front wheel drive. The Rampage, yeah, the pickup truck the little uh, Colt, which is not a K car, it's a different creature, but here is the, uh, the Dodge, what, 600, whatever that was, and of course, the LeBaron convertible. Inside, we go to the LeBaron convertible, the story of it, and we can see right here, the figures don't lie. Behind the gruff but kindly man with the big cigar, Lito Anthony Iacocca, Lee Iacocca to you and me, stands the American car company that builds and sells more front wheel drive cars than any other, the Chrysler Corporation. Getting back to that, Internationally, there are a number of companies already building 100% front drives, Volkswagen, Audi, Honda, Subaru, Saab, Renault, that don't have anywhere near the market share that Chrysler has. In fact, look at the Subaru ad on the left-hand side. That Subaru right there, inexpensive and built to stay that way, two and four-wheel drive. But again, Chrysler built way more front drive cars, and here it says here, so when the international oil supplies were choked off in 73, it was business as usual for those companies, the Japanese companies, but it meant panic in Motor City, whose history of small fuel efficient cars was peppered with forgettables like the Falcon, Corvair, Valiant, Pinto, and Vega. So in 1970s, confusion reigned in Detroit, which led to knee-jerk reactions like GM's downsizing. We see that Buick Turbo Regal right there. That's a 79, but 78 was the big year for the big shrink for everybody from General Motors to Chrysler. And of course, here is a uh, test of the LeBaron right here. And again, this is 13,998 bucks. And it says here, the first factory rag top in a decade to bear the Pentastar. You gotta remember 1970 was the final uh, Chrysler full size. Of course, Chrysler got out of the soft top business after 71's run of Barracudas and Challengers. The convertible share of the market had shrunk to the point of diminishing returns. And it says, cut to 1982 and a half, Chrysler Corporation leading all domestic manufacturers in corporate average fuel economy because of those front wheel drive cars and production of front wheel drive cars is back in the convertible business, having found ways to solve the problems of unibody convertibles and the economics of building them in low volumes. Enter cars and concepts. We mentioned them a minute ago, and again, they were located in Birmingham, uh, Michigan, or Brighton, Brighton, I think it was. But here it is. I'll read this because it's worth reading. It says here, to create a convertible from a two-door coupe, Chrysler used the now standard finite element modeling, FEM, and computer-aided design, CAD techniques, to develop three-dimensional structure models of the topless cars and pinpoint exactly where reinforcements would have to be. The result was a Y-shaped assembly welded into the floor pan that runs from the firewall foot area through the center of the car, under the standard console, across the rear, and back to the front rear of the wheelhouse area. Now, our new reinforced rear quarter panels, a new rear shelf running from side to side in the top storage well, reinforced A-pillars and additional door reinforcements were also added. Only the beginning, it says here, of course, the addition, uh, the convertibles have to have new windshields, one and a half inches lower than the coupe, frameless side glass, one and a half inches shorter, three-point seat belts were rerouted into the rear side panels, and the coupe seats were scrapped in favor of new low back buckets that sit lower in the car and further rearward. And and it says here, the work was done by Cars and Concepts. The cars were then shipped to Cars and Concepts of Bright Michigan to be relieved of their tops, finished off and shipped to dealers. And again, 12,825 of these were made by Cars and Concepts. And the very next year, they would begin making something like 300,000 Fox-based Mustang convertibles for Ford in the next decade. So Cars and Concepts was kept very busy and made plenty of money in the uh, decapitation business. Now again, we talk about those quarters. And here we have them right here, maybe thicker metal, but again, lots of reinforcements underneath. And around the back, the deck lid is the same as a four-door uh, Dodge Aries or Plymouth Reliant, but inside, there are some structures that help it to uh, become more sustainable, if you will. Spare tire well goes down low. And you gotta remember too, on the opposite end of the coin, this is 1982. This is Dodge's People Movers catalog for fleet sales, believe it or not. And here it is, you could actually, this is for the taxi cab market. And look on the left, there it is, the Dodge Aries Taxi. 
Aries, a bright new name in the commercial transportation business. Don't let its trim size make you think it's short on passenger room and comfort. Well, there it is, airport service. And of course, the Dodge Diplomat on the right-hand side, which was a traditional rear-wheel drive car. But again, yeah, this is a pretty rare thing. And even police cars, yeah, there was a cop car version. Not this, that's cool. But inside here, there was, believe it or not, a K-car cop car, Narshi Blows, that thing right there. I went to Clark University in Worcester, Mass, and we had one of these for the campus. Campus police. And it does say here that uh, the new Dodge Aries Scout car, not Interceptor or Police Pursuit, is the ideal police car for in town and around town police duties that don't require pursuit work. A few strategically placed pursuit cars can handle the occasional high speed run. The Dodge Aries Scout car can handle all the other jobs. And it says here, believe it or not, bigger than the 81 Ford LTD in Fairmont, Mercury Marquis and Zephyr, more legroom than a Cadillac in the K car. Interesting stuff. And of course, the Scout Scout car, the cop car has metallic linings, heavy duty suspension, cooling packages, etc. So, and even additional welding in the body structure. But again, that nasty little Trans 4 still in place, front wheel drive. And again, these cars did, they say that hot cakes sold like K cars. They were very popular and they saved the day. And one final thing about these, again, these are front wheel drive. So if we take the camera and stick it down low here, Chrysler definitely saved a bunch of money. No independent suspension here, a beam axle with coils that kind of looks like something a leftover from some other manufacturing process. That beam is a weird looking thing. But again, you know, the majority of K cars were four doors and wagons, whereas the microscopic minority were these things here. And again, if you had the money to buy a Z28 Camaro 1982, the brand new Z28, that looked kind of like a Ferrari, the cool one, would you do that or spend $4,000 more and buy one of these? Well, that's a choice you'll have to make. I think I know the answer myself. But if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Bang's YouTube channel, ring the bell, and that'll make you aware of the next video, which comes out tomorrow morning.